Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Deja Vu Survival, where we look at an old world with new eyes. My name is Glitch. Today we're going to look at some methods to help us avoid getting lost as we explore. So before we get started, we're going to look at how to enable coordinates in Bedrock Edition. And to do that, we're going to need to leave the game for just a second, so I'll be right back. Now to enable coordinates in Bedrock Edition, you want to start out here in the game menu by going to your world list. Okay, and then we're going to click on the little pencil icon to edit the world options. Scroll down and you'll see the show coordinates slider. You're just going to click that to enable them. And that's it. Now I know that may seem overly simplistic, but since at least in Bedrock Edition, coordinates technically count as a cheat, if you turn them on while you're in game, it will disable your ability to earn achievements for that world. In Java Edition, you can use the uh, the F3 key to pull up the debug screen, but in Bedrock, we don't have that ability. But now that we're we've got them enabled, let's go ahead and dive back into the game. Now that we're back in the world, you'll notice the coordinates in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Before we go out and about and start using them though, we're going to take just a couple of seconds to look at how they work, and I'm going to show you a graphic that you can find on the Minecraft Wiki, link to the full article on how coordinates work in the description below. Now coordinates are laid out in an XYZ format, and X shows you your east and west position, with east being positive and west being negative, and they work about the same as longitude. Your Y is your vertical position, from zero down at bedrock, pretty much up to infinity. However, 255 is the maximum limit where you can place blocks. And 64 is about sea level. Uh, so it works the same as elevation. This is especially useful for when you're out mining, as some of the ores can only found, be found below a certain Y level, and there are also a couple of useful game mechanics that can only occur above a certain Y level. The last digit is your Z axis, which is your south positive and north negative position, and it works the same as latitude. Now, one thing to remember in Minecraft, it does not work in the traditional sense of how, uh, how there's north and south. We don't have a south pole or a north pole. You're not guaranteed if you head far enough north, you're always going to get ice and snow. But that is a general overview of how they work. One other useful thing with coordinates is that because they're a little more difficult to turn on and off in Bedrock Edition, they form a part of your HUD. So if you're ever out and about and you want to do a screenshot or something like that, you can hide them using your F1 key. Take a screenshot and then just F1 key to bring them back. One other thing you'll probably notice is that we are far and removed from the 0, 0 position. Now, the y-axis 0 is pretty much impossible because in the y-axis 0 is bedrock and the only thing lower than bedrock is the void and beyond doing a couple of cheaty things and breaking bedrock, you would just fall through to the void to your inevitable doom. But as far as the X and Y axis, uh, we're not, you're not guaranteed to spawn at the zero, zero of the world. Though I do think it, uh, at some point in the series, it might be an interesting thing just to go out and about and see where that point is and what it looks like. For now, we'll just use our coordinates to get around. I recommend to keep a notebook handy uh, to jot down things like where your base is, along with other interesting things like villages, biomes, landmarks, now this is helpful because if you're ever out and about and you get lost, if you make the number match, you'll eventually find your way back to somewhere that you already know. Now the next thing we're going to do is go out and about, but before we do, we're going to craft up a couple extra things. Uh, we already made up a little bit, a few, I made up a few more torches off camera, and also in preparing for the episode, I did some just a tiny bit of exploring looking for some extra coal came across some extra iron and you may have noticed that i'm wearing a nice pair of new shoes and uh but i found some extra iron so we now have a nice iron pickaxe and also our uh, iron shoes 
and uh, came across a couple of skeletons. So got a few more arrows. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and craft a campfire. So with that in hand, we're going to go ahead and head on out. So the first and easiest thing you can do when you're exploring is as you're going along, you can leave a torch trail. All this involves is as you're walking along, just pop a torch down. Go a little further, pop a torch down. This serves two purposes. For one, you're going to light up the area, which will uh, help prevent mobs from spawning. But the other thing is, as you're going along, you're also going to show where you've been. So as you're walking along, if you see a torch, you know you've been there before. One more thing you can do is as you're going along, you can use a beacon. Now, I do understand that in the game, there is an item that's referred to as the beacon. This is a little more, think Lord of the Rings uh, signal fires type beacon. So what you do is just look straight down, hold down your space bar, and then you can place cobblestone down, get three or four up, up a torch down. Now this, for one, will make it easier to see. If you were coming from over there or over there, you would see a, a cobblestone pillar, which is not a naturally generated structure, and also the torch on it. So it'll give it just a little bit more. Now the one problem is that the, even though this is a light source and things like that, it's still going to be somewhat hard to see from a distance. So one of the things you can do as you're going along is you can... Uh, set up a beacon on a higher uh, cert a higher area that'll be a little more visible. So let's go ahead and hop down. Ow! And we're going to climb up to the top of where our base is. I think while we're going back, we're just going to go ahead and pop a few more torches down just to help light up the area. Because again, mobs only spawn at a light level um, at a certain light level. So as long as the area is sufficiently lit up, mo the less mobs will spawn. Ooh, let's, maybe we're going to have to build a bridge over that or something. We're just going to do a little torch spamming too, just to kind of cut down the amount of mobs we have. So, uh, you know what? Sun's going down. I think what we're going to do is we're going to quick take a nap. And I will see you guys fresh in the morning before we get started on this. Every Minecraft player's worst nightmare. You just want to go to bed. And... And good night. All right, here we are first in the morning. Let's go ahead and take a quick look around. Coastal seems clear, good. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and climb up this mountain. Uh, let's see now, go up here. Uh, this looks good. should do it so let's go ahead and get our shovel All right and we're on the top now what we're going to do up here is we're going to set up another uh, tower but using the uh, using the mechanic of the campfire I'm gonna jump up here and Go ahead and pull our campfire out. Now the campfire is new to version 1.10 and it's made with some logs and some charcoal and sticks. But what we do is we can go ahead and put it down. Now be careful because if you get too close to it, it can hurt you. You know, getting close to it like this won't. However, if you uh, stand on top of it, you will take damage. 
we're going to go ahead and come back down. Actually, we'll just do that. Now, one of the advantages of one, it's a larger light, so it's brighter, but also you have these smoke signals. So let's go ahead and we're going to find where did we come up? Ah, here's our stair step. Okay, carefully, carefully. <laughs> let's go ahead and do this. Uh, down, down, down. Ooh. Down, 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 down. Ooh. All right, now we're just going to run over here real quick. And as you can see, if you look up, not only do you have the light, but you also have the smoke. Now, there is a way to also increase the amount of smoke that's around, but that campfire will also be a, a light that we can use during the night. Now, later on we'll learn how to use a compass, but we're going to need a few more resources for that. If you do get lost, a couple of important things to do is, for one, don't panic. And while I finish up, I'm going to go ahead and just add a few more torches in and around here. But if you do get lost out and about, first important thing is, don't panic. Check your coordinates. If you uh, have been keeping notes, go ahead and work until you have one of the numbers that matches with something you know. And then if you follow that back to the uh, back to the and make the other number match, you'll eventually find your way itself back to uh, a place that you already know and back to where a uh, home is. Now, if you do. Uh, if you are out and about and wind up out at night, you can make an emergency hide hole, just dig right into the wall, or you can also just pillar up into a tree and wait out the night there. But for tonight, I think we're going to go ahead and cut it off right here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit a hit the like button and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. And I do hope I'll see you next time on the next episode of Deja Vu Survival. Thanks for watching.